On the third page, in section 12, you are only putting individuals who fund. The purpose of the FL-150 is to show only your income and expense declaration. In the first section, write your name, address, city, state, and zip code, telephone number, fax number, email address, and next to attorney for, write in pro per. In the second section, write San Joaquin next to county of, the street and mailing address are 180E Weber Ave. City and zip code are Stockton 95202. In the third section, write your name next to petitioner and your spouse's name next to respondent. The next section will be asking questions about your current employment or your most recent job, your age and education, and your tax information. Number one, employment. Write down your employer, your employer's address, employer's phone number, occupation, and date started. If you're unemployed, write down the date your job ended. Write down how many hours you worked per week and how much you got paid. Check the box to the right that most suits your work pay. If you have more than one job, attach an 8 and 1 half by 11 sheet of paper and list the same information as above for your other jobs. Write question 1 other jobs at the top. Number 2. Age and education. Write down your age, check if you've completed high school or the equivalent, the number of years of college completed and any degrees obtained, the number of years of graduate school completed and any degrees obtained, and write down if you have any professional or occupational licenses or vocation training. Number three, tax information. Write down the last year you filed taxes. Your tax filing status, single, head of household, married, filing separately, or married, filing jointly. Check California if you filed with the state of California, or check the other box and specify which state you filed your ta last taxes with, and write down the number of exemptions on your taxes. Number four, other parties' income. Estimate how much your spouse makes in a monthly income and explain why. If you're unsure, write unknown. If you've used any extra papers for additional information, write down how many pages you are attaching with this sheet. Date print and sign your name at the bottom of page one. On page two, write down your name next to petitioner and your spouse's name next to respondent. Attach copies of your pay stubs for the last two months and proof of any other income. Take a copy of your latest federal tax return to the court hearing, blacking out your social security number on the pay stub and tax returns. Number five, income. You're putting down your average income so if your pay differs from month to month, add up all income you received in the last 12 months and divide the total by 12. Fill out the letters that apply to you. Leave areas blank if they don't. Number six, investment income. Attach a schedule showing gross receipts less cash expenses for each piece of property. Specify any investment incomes that don't relate to A, B, C, and letter D. Number seven. Income from self-employment after business expenses for all businesses. Check the box that applies to you and your business. Write down the number of years in the business, name of the business, and type of business. Attach a profit and loss statement for the last two years or a Schedule C from your last federal tax return, blacking out your Social Security number. If you have more than one business, provide the information for each of your businesses. Number eight, additional income. If you have received any income that doesn't apply to the above questions, specify and write down here, such as inheritance or winning the lottery. Number nine, change in income. If your financial situation has changed significantly over the last 12 months, specify and write down how here. Number 10, deductions. Read through each option and write down any deduction that applies to you. Number 11, assets. Total any cash and checkings accounts, savings, credit union, money market, or other deposit accounts that you have. Total any stocks, bonds, and any other assets you could easily sell. And total any other property assets that did not apply in the above questions. Number 13, average monthly expenses. The first set of checkboxes are asking if your monthly expenses fluctuate or stay the same. If your monthly expenses are the same each month, check Actual Expenses. 
If they slightly change from month to month, check Estimated Expenses. If they change greatly, check Proposed Needs. Next, check if you rent or mortgage your home. If you mortgage your home, write down the average principal and interest. Fill out the rest of the expenses until letter Q. Now, fill out number 14, installment payments and debts not listed above. List any that wasn't mentioned above and add up all payments listed here and enter it in letter Q on question 13. Add up all expenses, excluding A1, A, and B, and write the total in letter R. Lastly, write down any expenses paid by others. On page 3, write down your name next to petitioner and your spouse's name next to respondent. Number 12. The following people live with you. List all people living with you and include their name, age, how the person is related to you, the person's monthly income, and if they pay some of the household expenses. On page 4, write down your name next to petitioner and your spouse's name next to respondent at the top of the page. Fill this page out only if your case will involve child support. Number 16. Number of children. Specify the number of children under the age of 18 with the other parent in the case. Only put children that you biologically had or adopted with this spouse. On letter B, write down the percentage of time they spend with you and the other parent. If you are unsure about percentage or it has not been agreed on, describe your parenting schedule in the provided area below. Number 17. Children's health care expenses. Check if you do or do not have health insurance available to your children through your job. If you do, write down the name and address of the insurance company and the monthly cost for the children's health insurance. Number 18. Additional expenses for the children in this case. Write down any child care, child's health care not covered by insurance, travel expenses for visitation, and children's education or other special needs. Number 19. Special hardships. If you have any special hardships for any of the children, such as extraordinary health expenses not included in 18b, major losses not covered by insurance, expenses for your minor children who are from other relationships and are living with you, provide their names and ages below, and why these create extreme financial hardships for you. Number 20. Other information you want the court to know concerning support in your case. If you want anything else the court to know, write them down here. 